Space is vast. Really, truly vast. It's hard to wrap our minds around it. For centuries, we thought everything revolved around us. But then came along some very smart people who started noticing patterns in the sky. One of these was Johannes Kepler. Kepler was a bit of a character, a true 17th century scientist. He looked at the stars, did a ton of math, and came up with three laws that changed how we think about the universe. These laws, my friends, are the cosmic dance moves of, of the planets. Before Kepler, we thought planets moved in perfect circles. Turns out the universe is a bit more funky than that. Kepler said, nope, it's ellipses. Imagine a slightly squashed circle, like someone sat on a grapefruit. That's an ellipse. And the sun? It's not right in the center, but off to one side, a point called the focus. So buckle up, space cadets. Let's break down Kepler's laws and understand how these cosmic rules govern the very ballet of our solar system. Kepler's first law is all about the shape of a planet's path around the sun. Remember those ellipses? That's the key. This law tells us that planets don't move in perfect circles. They move in ellipses with the sun at one of the two focal points. Think of it like this. Imagine a big oval racetrack. The sun is like a giant orange sitting near one end of the track, not in the very center. A planet, let's say Earth, is a little blue marble whizzing around that track. Now, because it's an ellipse, Sun as Earth is closer to the Sun during summer in one hemisphere, and Sun as it's farther away, winter in that same hemisphere. This elliptical path is crucial for understanding how seasons work. Kepler's first law revolutionized our understanding of the solar system. It showed that planets don't follow simple, perfect circles. Instead, they dance to the rhythm of elliptical orbits. Kepler's second law is a bit trickier to visualize, but stick with me. It explains how the speed of a planet changes as it travels around the sun. The law states that a line connecting a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Imagine our Earth again, orbiting the sun. Now, picture a giant imaginary line connecting Earth to the sun. As Earth moves along its elliptical path, this line sweeps across an area of space. What Kepler figured out was that this line sweeps out the same amount of area over the same amount of time, no matter where Earth is in its orbit. This means when Earth is closer to the Sun, it's moving faster. When Earth is farther away, it's moving slower. Why? It's like a cosmic game of conservation of energy. The closer you are to a large object, the stronger its gravitational pull and the faster you move. Kepler's second law is all about that cosmic balancing act, explaining why planets speed up and slow down as they journey around their stars. Kepler's third law is like a cosmic clock. It connects a planet's orbital period, how long it takes to go around the sun once, to its average distance from the sun. This law states that the square of a planet's orbital period is proportional to the cube of its semi-major axis, half the length of the longest part of the ellipse. Okay, that sounds complicated, but it's a pretty elegant relationship. Basically, the farther away a planet is from the sun, the longer it takes to complete an orbit. And, and we're not just talking a little bit longer. The orbital period increases much faster than the distance. Think of it like this. If one planet is twice as far from the sun as another planet, it won't just take twice as long to orbit the sun. It will take much longer. This relationship holds true for all the planets in our solar system. Kepler's third law is a powerful tool because it allows us to calculate the orbital periods of planets and other celestial objects, even if they are incredibly far away. It's a testament to the order and predictability we find in the vastness of space.